Hi everyone, my name is Nacho Yahweh and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, uh, welcome. I was doing a lot of uh, speed paints and photo studies a long time ago. And actually I don't even know why I stopped doing them because it was very helpful. So I would like to restart again my, my channel and see if uh, from time to time I can just like uh, show you some video processes some thoughts, uh, tips, uh, or whatever you guys need. My idea is also to force myself to, to do more personal work, do more uh, painting studies, and I think it's a good, uh, a good opportunity to, to make those videos to show my process and share uh, whatever you guys want me to, to share with you. When I approach a, a photo, usually I don't like to just uh, carbon copy. I think one of the good things about like uh, studying a photo is like getting with the parts that you really like or even change the ones that you don't feel that they, they are right. Uh, usually a photo is a photo and there are things that maybe they're adding a lot of extra noise or maybe the light is not correct or uh, there are things that are not quite right. But anyway, usually when I pick a photo it's because uh, it, got, uh, it caught my attention. It's because there's something that I like about it. In this case, I took this photo on one of my runs and I really like the composition. I love the, the vault. I also like the colors a lot. I really like the, how the, that white and red uh, bright color contrasts with the, with the water. But uh, in, my, in my picture, uh, as you can see, um, it was like a vertical, a vertical photo and the light was a little bit dull. I didn't have any interest in light and shadow. So that's why before starting to do a study, I modified it a little bit to see how it could look with a different composition and also different lighting. So this is what I'm doing here. Here I don't spend more than five minutes editing the photo. I don't pretend to do like a heavy edition here, just uh, lay down the new composition and the light settings that I like and um, just to establish a little bit uh, a clear direction where I want to go when I start doing my, my photo study. But I mean, it's very rough as you can see, I don't spend, I don't like to, to waste my time on this. I just want to see if the idea that I have with a new composition and light works and I jumped into painting as soon as I can. When starting, I just focus on blocking the main shapes. Right now, I don't want to get distracted by any elements like uh, painting or starting the sketching, uh, thinking about colors or texture. Right now, I just want to check that my composition works very well and then I will focus on the other elements. So this is the, the first stage. For me, it's one of the most important. So it should be done pretty quickly. In this stage, I keep my process very straightforward. It's very simple, as you can see. The main tools that I use are the, the paint bucket and the lasso tool. Those are the two things that I, I mostly use. And sometimes I do some sketch with the normal brush. One of the things that I really do is to keep my project very clean and organized. I don't consider myself a very organized person, to be honest, but I found myself that uh, it's very easy uh, later on when you need to do any changes, uh, move elements or uh, change the colors. It's way simpler if you keep each element separated and organized uh, in a different layer. By organized, I mean to keep every element that you're going to paint on a separate layer. Because the boat is symmetrical, I'm just sketching the interior. I'm just drawing one of the sides, then duplicating it and then mirroring it. So later on I can place it inside with the transform tool. Now 
now that the interior is already sketched, for me it's way easier to trace it with a lasso tool. Now it's time to define very quickly the water reflections. About the color, I'm trying to not to be extremely specific right now. My idea is just like to fix it later. I'm adding like a, um, more or less the color that I want, of course, but it will vary for sure in the future. Here I was experimenting with some Photoshop filters for uh, the distortion water effect. I applied it, but uh, later on I think I, I changed it because I didn't like it. It looks uh, quite fake. But anyway, that's part of, uh, of the process is to experiment, try things and see if they work and if not, uh, move on to the next thing. I am adding some of the highlights that I painted in the original photo. This change in light, I think it, uh, it increases a lot the sense of uh, volume uh, in the overall image.
At this point, I'm happy with my image. The composition works very well. The lighting also adds a lot of volume. So now it's time to take care of the medium and small elements and also start adding more texture with, uh, with my brushstrokes. The shadows in the water look very flat and very hard. That's why I'm using a texture eraser and a texture brush to get rid of them. It will create a nice contrast between the boat and the water. One of the main goals that I had when starting this painting was not to use any photo texture. Everything needs to be hand painted. That's why right now I'm struggling finding the right brush that will give me this texture that I need. I'm using this scattered one that I really like it for, for the stone. It gives this sense of realism that the image needs. Anyway, I don't like to use a lot of uh, brushes. In this case, for all the main uh, composition, I just use a solid brush. And right now, two, three, not more than four uh, different brushes to give the texture. Just experiment with what you have. I don't even remember if uh, I made those or they're from someone, to be honest, because I, I haven't changed my brushes in, in many years. But I mean, any texture brush will, will make the work. I always like to add a little bit of warmth to the shadow with a little bit of orange or yellow, any kind of warm color. At this point, I'm just adding more noise with a texture brush. But again, I don't want to focus on all the little details that the original image has. I just do want to keep uh, that organic feeling because if not, the image will look very, very flat. And it's just adding this illusion of, of busyness and a lot of details. While there's nothing, it's just like a couple of rust strokes with some texture.
When doing photo studies, everything is about choices. What do you want to keep from the original image? What do you want to change? What do you want to add? Uh, this is the most fun and also stressful part. But I mean, the, the plan is not just to carbon copy everything that you have in the original, original source. Here, for example, I'm adding some kind of uh, bluish violet to the water. That doesn't exist in the original photo. But I wanted to have like a more vibrance and a little bit more of a subtle change in colors. You don't need to paint any single bold, rope or complicated shape that appears on the original image. One tip or trick is not to zoom in a lot. If you see here, I mean, sometimes I, I do some kind of zoom in, but overall I'm keeping my image like uh, probably like a 50% of uh, its original size. That way I don't focus too much into details. The same for the reference image. I have uh, usually a thumbnail and I never uh, zoom in to check details because if not I will focus on those details and I will lose a lot of time and energy doing something that it really doesn't matter.
as a fun fact, I made some brushes with the numbers one, two, three, and four that you might notice there, like this one. Um, they were intended to just uh, help me separating and organize my, my brushes. But later on, I, I'm using them quite a lot because they're just like so simple. They, don't, they just have shape, they're flat. But for making quick shapes, uh, actually they work very well. So you never know when, when you're gonna find your next favorite uh, brush. Every time I add a new color variation, I try to keep the same value. And that means if you turn the image in black and white, you will see that uh, the level of black or white of the new color is very similar to the original one. That way it doesn't make uh, that much noise. It feels like a more complex than it is, but it won't generate like a visual noise and, and something that is, is off. Usually if in your image uh, the color feels off, probably it's because of that. Turn the image in black and white and check the values. This is probably the more tedious and boring part right now. It's just about rendering and, and give it more detail. If you see, if you notice, uh, I'm putting a lot of effort and detail into this uh, boat, more than the rest. Mostly because it's the central piece and the central part of, part of the composition, so it makes sense. I would like just to keep the other parts a little bit more loose. I am making a new texture just with a simple brush. Usually I do like a flat uh, texture and then I modify it with the transform tool. Later on I just select it and then I paint in the areas that I want. As I did before, notice how I'm adding different colors here. They have a different hue, they are colder, they will contrast very well with the warmth of the concrete, but the values are pretty similar. A graffiti is always the best way of uh, disguising your signature, but also it works very well uh, to add an extra touch of color.
by this point, everything is more or less done. It's adding a little bit of uh, touch-ups, a couple of details, uh, some brush strokes here and there. But right now, it's just about like uh, deciding when do you think that your painting is done. I don't want to overcomplicate it, so it's mostly done. Before wrapping it up, I just check the brightness and contrast and the levels. And after that, what I do, I do is just like a little trick, if you want to call it like this, that I don't even know where did I find it, but I find it very, very cool. What do I do is just um, I create a new layer and with a random brush, I just create a lot of like brush strokes with different colors here and there. Sometimes I even uh, add a photograph that has a lot of color. It's whatever you just try it out and, and see what uh, fits better for your image. Once I have a lot of random colors, I set the layer in usually sort of hue or saturation, color or luminosity mode. Just try it out. It depends. I'm just like uh, trying all those modes and see which one fits better and I like the most. Then uh, I create a mask and then I just paint in the areas that I want to have these color touch-ups. They are very, very subtle color touch-ups. I mean, they don't need to be overpowering, of course. But what I find with those is they create this sense of chromatic aberration and that feeling of uh, an old photograph. Uh, I, don't know, I really like it. It feels very realistic and I mostly add this uh, layer to all my paintings. So try it out. I find it nice. And that's all. Thank you very much for watching my video. I really hope that this video helped you understanding how do I approach this kind of studies. Uh, please again, subscribe if you liked it and send me any comments and see you in the next video. Bye.